Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. I thought my views were a bit high, so it's time to come back and do a Kubernetes video and get those numbers down. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to share a single GPU between multiple pods in a Kubernetes cluster. I think I'd erroneously said before, and it's my fault, RTFM, that I didn't know about this earlier. But if you're using something like my setup, where you're trying to leverage the integrated GPU on say an Intel chip, much like my MSO1 cluster, you can actually share the iGPU between multiple pods. Previously, I didn't know that you could do that. So I had a bit of a limited setup where I would have say Plex on one node and Kubernetes on the other, and that was pretty much it. Now, as you can see, I've got both of those running on the same node using the same GPU, awesome. That also means now that I can free up some of my existing things that were still left over in Docker because of the iGPU requirement. So things like Frigate, for example, I can now put that into Kubernetes and reap all the benefits of having that full HA setup. How do we get there? Well, thankfully it's pretty simple. And if you've seen in a previous video where I set up GPU pass through into the cluster, we simply need to revisit that and basically choose a different deployment, a different YAML file. Let's head over now into VS Code and let's start this process. It's only a few minutes. This will also be useful because I'm also gonna be upgrading the version as well. The version I did at the time, I think was version 0.28. We're now on version 0.30. So over on my cluster, if we scroll down, you can see that on this node here, this agent two on Dawn machine, you can see that I've got Plex down here and I've also got Jellyfin here. And as you know, in previous videos, I've set up hardware transcoding on both of these. So it's great to see that now they can share the same iGPU on the same node. Previously, these were always on different nodes. But how did I get here? Well, for that, we're gonna to have to dive into VS Code. So now I've connected to one of my master nodes. You'll need to connect to one of those masters in order to do this because that's what you'll have used to install this in the first place. So I'm talking about the Intel GPU driver. And what we need to do is the following. Now, full disclaimer, I've already upgraded, so I'm having to go back now and show you the steps that I did. So the first thing you'll want to do, I don't know if this is actually required, but I thought it was a good idea to do it. I stopped all of the containers that were using a GPU. So in my instance, I stopped Plex and I stopped Jellyfin. Once those were down, it was now time to have a quick look at the documentation and familiarize myself with them. And if you're wondering, this is where I found the instructions for this. So this is the alternative installation method for the Intel GPU. And the cool thing here is it installs to all nodes with monitoring and the critical part is that shared dev, that shared device. So if we have a quick look down here, you'll see that it has the same three installation requirements. So you want the node feature discovery installed, then you want the rules for detecting the GPUs, and then you want to install the daemon set. Now, if you actually go to where this is, so this location here, you'll see that these the add args here. And if you click on the add args, you'll see this critical line down here, shared dev number equals 30. That was the crucial part that was missing. Now, I could probably go back to my existing daemon set and add this in as an argument, but I'm gonna go down the route of following the official instructions just in case there's anything supported or anything else that needs to be installed as a dependency to make sure that this works. This also enables monitoring as well, which is something I will look into in a future video. Now, once we pull this, we should then, obviously you could also tweak this number here from 30 to whatever you wanted. 30 is gonna be more than enough for what I require. So now that we understand what this is doing, let's head back into VS Code and let's start this process. So now assuming that you've closed down all the applications running that are using a GPU, we're ready to begin this process. So what I did is if you think of the way you install this, so you do NFD first and the node feature rules and then the plugin itself, I'm gonna uninstall this the opposite way around. So I'm gonna go from the GPU first, then this one, and then this one. And where we see the release version, I'm also gonna bump that up to the latest version, which is 30.0. So, like I said, I've already installed the latest version, but I'm gonna uninstall it just to show the process. Now, you'll have to substitute this value here on screen with the value that you're running. But what we do is we delete that. That's gonna go and uninstall the GPU plugin. Then we're gonna delete the node feature rules. So again, change that version. That should then go through and delete those. And then finally, we're gonna delete the NFD, the node feature discovery. 
So now that's being deleted and you'll see once that's completed that everything's gone off the cluster. Remember, you'll need to change that version to your version. We're ready then to basically install the new one. So follow exactly what's on the GitHub and substitute in the version that you want. At the moment for this video it's version 30 so I'm basically going to do the process we just did in reverse and instead I'm going to do an apply instead of a delete. So the first thing I'm going to do is that node feature discovery. Now this will go away and basically find out all of the things that a node can do. Once that's created we then need to install the actual rule set. So the node feature rules again putting in that value of 30 that's now installed and then finally we can do the GPU plugin. And so this is the final one here. And once that's done, the Intel GPU is created. Hopefully now we can head back over into our rancher or whatever we're using to monitor our cluster. And where I've got Plex here, I can now turn that on. And similarly for Jellyfin, if I just go up, I can also add that here. Now with any luck, those should start up it's updating. I've got both of these containers set to automatically pull images each time just so it always stays on the latest version but in a few seconds time that should be up and running. So yeah Plex is up and running and Jellyfin should also be updating and yes that's up and running. So if we have a quick look just in the logs you'll see yeah it's found the media encoder and it's done that. It's got available hardware acceleration so yeah, everything is up and running. And I'm not gonna risk another strike, so I won't show you it working with a video, but it is working. So hopefully that gives you everything you need now to maximize the GPU capabilities within your cluster. Can't believe I didn't know this or see it in the documentation. Really does pay to go and read through all of that online first. Anyway, let me know what you're going to be doing with this. Hopefully in the near future, I'll be porting Frigate over into Kubernetes and I'll show you a video on that because obviously we don't need the Coral TPU now because you can use GPU acceleration. I've actually been doing that in Docker for a couple of months now and it's been really smooth. So I'm keen to get all of those advantages in my HA setup. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.